From Rail 8 on, there's this cool thing. It's based on the upstream cockpit, but we call it web console because it's a little more uh, indicative of exactly what it, what it is and what it does. Uh, this is an administration panel for your Rail system that has a lot of cool plugins, and we're always making and releasing new ones that do more and add more functionality. I think there's one in development now that I don't think is released yet, so I don't know if we can talk about it, but pretty cool stuff is, is happening with web console. Now, uh, I'm an old admin. I remember the early days of web administration consoles and they were generally considered a really bad idea. So initially when I heard about web console, I'm like, I don't want that. When I started looking at it, figuring out how it works, it's actually pretty good. Imagine I've just logged into web console. I logged in it as a user, not as root or something. This user has privileges. So I can actually use web console as an administrator, but at the moment I'm logged in as just my user. You see up here at the top, it says limited access with that yellow lock. If I click on limited access or where it says turn on administrative access, it'll ask me for my password, just like would have. So I'm going to use my password manager to pop that in there, authenticate. And now I have administrative access. I show that basically because if you log in as a standard user or say you've delegated access to like a junior admin or something that you want them to be able to use this, you can still leverage that pseudo mechanism to give them the access that they want. Now, I don't know how well it works for filtering pseudo. One of these days, I'm going to have to try that out. Like, what if I limit them to what they can do with pseudo? How does web console treat that? Uh, my user has full administrative access through pseudo. So I can do full administrative stuff through uh, web console. All right. So I've got a bunch of plugins for cockpit slash web console installed. I wanted to show, uh, I don't have a really planned demo here. I just want to show you some of the cool things that I think are, are useful. Things like logs. I can go look through my logs. You can filter your logs based on what you're looking for. Uh, you can see what generated these errors and what they are. You can see I've got a bunch of errors in mine. Maybe these are things I should look into. <laughs> some of these are the output from Podman containers that are running. This one here is a Podman container that I'm running. And it's just the output that came from the container. And sometimes the system journal can't accurately determine whether that's an error or just normal log output. That's why these are showing up as warnings. Uh, networking is another one that I use pretty frequently on this particular host, because this is my home lab uh, virtualization machine. And I do a lot of network bridging to get from my virtual machines and onto my home network VLANs, right? I actually have my home network separated into VLANs. So I have like a lab, a place for services to run, and a place for my Internet of Things stuff. And I've got separate VLANs for all of that. And that can be kind of a nightmare to sometimes configure at the command line, even with Network Manager, right? NMCLI is a really nice tool. Building, making bridges, especially when there's VLANs involved and trunks and all kinds of stuff, it gets layered and complicated quickly. But when you have a nice visual interface to get that done, this is one of these places where I think web console really shines, right? So you can see here, I've got all these Ethernet adapters, like VEthernet 10 to bridge number 10, like bridge 2-SVC. I've even named it in a way. I know that's my services network. I have all these alternate IPs associated with it. Those are actually IPs that I have mapped into Podman containers. I run some things in Podman on this host and some things in virtual machines. There's another bridge for my Internet of Things stuff. So like my home assistant machine runs in that network so that it's accessible and it can reach all of my IoT stuff. Then I can, of course, reach it and manage its VM. I think that's really helpful. I can manage Podman containers right through here, right? Now, some of these are kind of hard to read, but if I go down here, you can see I've got an HTTPD container. Surprising, right? that I would have a, a, I being one of the hosts of Into the Terminal would have a TTPD container on my, my home lab machine. Now, these are things that are owned by me. There's also, these are ones that are running as a uh, root. And that's because I can see them because I have enabled administrative access, right? So, you know, here, look, there's Jellyfin. If you're curious how I serve <laughs> content to my home network, like uh, media, like uh, shows and, and, and whatnot. Yeah, there's a couple things up and running here. Navidrome for music, right? Anyway, Podman containers. And these are all pods. You can see within these pods, let me find one that has, I don't think I have any really complicated pods here that have a whole bunch of containers within them. But you can see here that you can expand it and see how many containers are within each pod, stuff like that. And the other thing that I really love about Web Console is this Virtual Machines uh, plugin, which talks to Libvirt. 
which is what I run all my VMs in. This lets me bring up things like consoles for VMs. You've, you've seen me use this a bunch of times on this show uh, whenever I have a demo that I have to be at the console of the system. So here's the machines I was using for the IDM demo. Let's bring up CLI0. That's the machine that I logged into with my test user. Because I have it zoomed in, it's hard to see some of this stuff. But see right there, there's my console. A little bit's off the bottom of the screen. So it's a little bit hard to use in this small of a window. But there you go. You can see the VM console. I don't want to walk through every single piece, but there's a lot of really useful things in here. Anything you think I should show, Scott? Anything you love about Web Console? Oh, well, we already saw the integrated terminal, right? So you yep. can go through your web application and still get that terminal access that we all know and love. Software updates, so we can apply software to the machine. That's a good one. And I intentionally haven't updated this machine in a while just for this demo. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I see automatic updates is turned off, Nate. You know that I'm really against automatic updates and I have yet another proof point of why it's a terrible idea that I can mention at the end of the show. Okay, yeah, automatic updates is really cool in concept. I love that you can do it, but the old sysadmin in me is like, no, we don't do automatic updates. We plan scheduled maintenance windows and that's when we do updates. <laughs> so I joked at the beginning of the segment that web console is for new. That's, that's I think, the stigma with cockpit and web console. The yeah. reality is... Even as an experienced administrator, there's a lot of really nice stuff here. One of our coworkers told me that he uses Cockpit to do all of his disk management. He will never again use command line utilities to do disk management because things like LVM resizing, you click on the LVM that you want to resize, you click a button that says resize, and then there's a slider. And you just slide the size to what you want. It will be you don't like or reduction. You don't like in, in your head converting blocks to, to bits, to bytes, to kilobytes, to kibibytes, or whatever it is that we're using nowadays. <laughs> well, it's even worse than that because LVM uses logical extents. And so right. you have the amount of disk space and what your logical extent size is to figure out how big you need to make it. I invariably do the math wrong. And so with the slider, I don't have to do the math anymore. And that's pretty you fantastic. Just, you just make the slider go. Yeah, that is handy. So yeah. I joke that it's for noobs. It makes a lot of administrative tasks really smooth. We give each other a lot of flack about the GUI versus not GUI, right? Being completely honest, there was a day when it was just like a, a badge of honor to be able to do everything text mode over SSH, right? And awesome. You can do that. That's great. What do you have to prove? If you can get the job done, why does it matter how you did it, <laughs> right? Well, ultimately... You still kind of need to know some of those things because what happens when you're well, not yes. able to, for whatever reason, you need to troubleshoot it. So I'm not right. saying web console takes away the need for us to learn. Things. Exactly. You absolutely need an understanding of what's going on under the covers. I'm saying that if you know how to do it and you can do it at the command line, but it just is so much easier with a GUI, use the GUI. No one's watching. <laughs> <laughs> and if they are, they shouldn't judge. Well, and the other thing that is like an underreported feature of Web Console, do you know that you can use it to proxy into other machines? Yes. I didn't set up anything to demo that, but let me go back to my share, we go, which I still can't see in here. Um, I'm assuming you can see it. Up here in the corner, if we click on this little down arrow, I can add in another host. I don't have one that I can easily set up authentication for, but basically you'd put in a host name and a username, and then it'll connect to that host. So if, if you have shared authentication across all of your systems with maybe something like IDM, this makes it really simple. If the username and password matches across the board, you can add in several hosts here. I've heard some reports that if you get too many hosts in here, it starts to really make Web Console kind of sluggish. I don't know if there's something planned to resolve that. I also don't know what that upper number is, but keep that in mind. If you've got a thousand hosts you're trying to manage this way, <laughs> your mileage may vary. <laughs> And, and I think that's another thing, right? Like Web Console works great when you're managing one host or five hosts. You know, as you're managing a hundred, you're not going to be able to connect to the Web Consoles of a hundred boxes, right? So and you start to learn how to do automation the larger your fleet gets. From what I recall, there's a way to set up Web Console on those sort of sub hosts, the hosts you're going to manage from a central place, that they don't run the full web application. They run just a socket that... Web console can connect to and issue commands, right? I think that's how it works. Anyway, going off the reservation. 